The Health Fix Podcast teaches you how to take charge of your health naturally by giving you the information you need to elevate your health. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. In today's episode, I'm interviewing Dr. Aime Sanchez. She's a psychologist, neuropsychologist, award-winning, best-selling author, an executive coach, and a speaker specializing in organizational and business consulting and coaching for high-performing individuals, teams, and organizations. Dr. Sanchez's sweet spot is working with women leaders to teach them how to effectively navigate the politics of promotion and utilize a strategic approach to advancing in their careers. Now, Dr. Sanchez was on the Health Fix on episode 200, and we had talked about so many things, we just had to bring her back on and do another interview. Now, before we jump into the podcast, here's a message about my sponsors. Hey, Health Junkies, want to tell you a little bit about one of my sponsors for the podcast, the High Country Lodge in Breckenridge, Colorado. It is a lodge that can host up to 40 people. They have a beautiful deck that has a great view of multiple mountains, and it has a lovely fireplace where you can cozy up after a day of skiing at Breckenridge. It's not right on the mountain, but you know what? You don't have to be. This place is just beautiful on its own. It's a couple minutes from the mountain, a couple minutes to town, and you have access to multiple trails. You can mountain bike, you can ski, you can snowshoe from this location. It's great for year-round recreation. I highly recommend checking out the High Country Lodge. So go to ahighcountrylodge.com and book your next retreat, wedding, just getaway, family reunion. It's a great place for multiple things and I highly recommend it. Go check it out. Hello there, health junkies. Welcome to another episode of The Health Fix. I'm your host, Dr. Janine Krause. Today, I have Dr. Aime Sanchez on, and we're going to be talking again because I just could, didn't get enough on, on round one. And we're going to talk a little bit more about burnout and career burnout and how Dr. Aime got to the point you know, that she decided she wanted to help others with career burnout and finding their true passion in life. So Dr. Sanchez, thank you again for coming on The Health Fix. Thanks for having me, Dr. Janine. I'm excited to be here. Hey, we're going to get into some good stuff here. Yeah. And and true story, I want I really want to talk about your background story because after we finished our first podcast, you started telling me a little bit about how you got into working with women, working with career coaching. And I was like, oh my gosh, we need to share this because so many people in the career space think that we have to just push and push and push and and not be able, you know, it's either career or family or how do we juggle both and and what do we do? So do you mind kind of giving folks a little bit of a background in terms of what led you to coming into working with folks one-on-one and helping them to, to blow up their careers in a good way and not blow up their lives at the same time? Yeah, 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 sure. Okay, so here's, here's the story. I wish it was glamorous, but it's really not. <laughs> it's a, a story that started with me kind of getting into the healthcare uh, realm. I'm a psychologist by trade, neuropsychologist, and had been working at the management level. And I was up pretty high in the ranks as far as my level of responsibility. But what I found very quickly was that the things that I loved about doing the work were very people oriented, very relationship based, but there was a big piece of this job that was very tactical and task oriented. And quickly, there was kind of this um, misalignment, if you will, with the things that drive me to want to engage with people at this level and what the job was requiring. There was more work than there was time. And so, you know, something that started out to be a great opportunity to really expand upon my leadership skills and engage with people at this level became something that was so overwhelming that it began spilling over into other areas of my life. It wasn't, you know, a straight nine to five. It was a 24 seven job. I had a cell phone. I was available by email. I was getting texts at three o'clock in the morning, you name it, whatever it was, I was doing it. And um, that was the piece that I didn't like so much. But the way that I'm wired, and a lot of people are wired this way when they work in management or supervisory level positions, or even in industries like healthcare, where it's 24 seven, you just tell yourself to suck it up. (laughs) 
right? Mm -hmm. Because that's what it requires. You're not a quitter. I mean, there's so many strong qualities that you have that make you a really great leader. But there are also those things that can cause you to have some very significant blind spots. And for me, that blind spot was not being able to read what my limits were personally. Like, I had no boundaries around it because there was these constant disturbances and intrusions upon my personal time, my private time with my family, even the opportunities that I could have to try and sleep. My sleep cycle was interrupted. I mean, there was no place to rest and restore. And so for me, what happened was a crash and burn situation. And it wasn't one time, it was multiple times. Um, But the one that probably, you know, there was all these pivotal moments and across that there was still this drive and ambition that I had to continue to climb the corporate ladder and try to be seen and be visible. And all of that was happening at the same time that my life was somewhat imploding. Um, But that last pivotal moment came when I had an exacerbated health crisis that almost took my life. And I was at work. It was like seven in the morning. And we were scheduled to have some huge audit, you know, one of these things that we have every year. And I felt myself feel like I had an elephant sit on my chest. And I thought, you know, this better not be an anxiety attack. I don't get anxiety or panic attacks, right? Uh, It wasn't that. I just could not breathe. And uh, so I ended up having to call in, I felt like, you know, I was a quitter because I had to call in the day of an audit, you know, one of these high visibility situations where you're not supposed to get sick, but yet I'm sick. And I drove myself home, which was like an hour and a half, (laughs) had my husband come and take me to the, to the hospital. And then they admitted me. I was in a medical crisis (laughs) and I could not breathe. They had to administer me oxygen. (laughs) So had I somewhere between that drive home and what had you totally passed out or whatever, like it could have been a horrible situation. But for me, it was a life and death situation. It took nine months before I was able to be ready to go back to work. I was so sick and had not realized that I had um, just kind of started this process within my internal body that started the shutdown that I had signs for months, even years, if you will that I had ignored, but I'd gotten to that point where now I had adrenal fatigue on top of an autoimmune problem on top of um, a really exacerbated health crisis. And so that's how I found myself being in this situation where I had to slow down so I could speed up at the right time. Oh, <laughs> yes. It's, it's funny though. You bring up a couple of really good points. Like I'm not a quitter, right? Cause I think a yeah. lot of people will push themselves to the limit because of that whole concept of like, if I don't show up, I'm a quitter. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like, where does that come from? Where do we get that? Is this, is this like ingrained in us as little, you know, young women that we need to, you know, prove ourselves? Mm -hmm. I think as a society, we have not been very forgiving of people's need to Mm -hmm. have boundaries around their time when it comes to work. Mm -hmm. Right. And, um, yeah, so I think as women, it's, it's, a, it's a different conversation, but it's still the same problem because we're, fo- we're forced, you know, with women coming into the workforce to multitask. You've got to do everything. If you're someone with a family or you're married or what, ha- you got to wear all these different hats, but yet there's this perception about the quality of professional that you are if you give more attention to family relationships or what have you than you do your job whereas men don't have to deal with that as much as women and so that's why I say it's a different conversation but it's the same problem Um, because as a woman if I said hey you know I need to take off because I got to go to my kids um, PTA um, meeting or parent teacher conference or hey I I mean I had times when I couldn't get off for um, my prenatal appointments when I was I mean, I mean are you kidding me <laughs> but somehow I'm viewed as less than reliable or less than credible as a leader or as a professional because I have to tend to myself so yeah I think it gets ingrained early on and the higher up that we climb in the corporate ladder we're very intuitive about understanding that we're competing with everyone else right and so that the 
these positions as you go up, it's like a bottleneck. They're more competitive. There's less of these positions. And so you just put all those things on the back burner, like your self-care, your need to draw appropriate boundaries around your time. And you don't think about it unless you hit a brick wall, like I did going 180 miles an hour. (laughs) Oh man. I mean, I have a very similar story and very similar about boundaries too. And I think it's interesting how when we get into these higher positions, I mean, I was not in a management type of position. I just was a manager of a whole bunch of patients in in my my situation. I couldn't imagine managing people and patients Mm -hmm. um, in that department. And the very similar, it was like I was answering the phone trying to say, you know, save literally um, in my head, um, all these other people at multiple hours of the day with questions about, Mm -hmm. you name it, health-wise. And same kind of thing, you know, you just get to a point where you just keep doing this. And, and then I ended up on, I ended up having a panic attack mm. that, that had me on the floor of a, a parking garage and couldn't get up and, and was just like, oh my God, thank God my husband had a dental appointment nearby that day to like peel me off the, the concrete. Cause I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. Um, but the point is, and the reason I wanted you to tell your story and I want, always like to repeat a little bit of mine is that. It's this boundaries thing too. That's yes. kind of hard for us ladies. We just sometimes have some issues with that. Don't you think too that people tell us who we're supposed to be? Mm-hmm. So we don't have the ability at times, it feels like, or the permission, I should say, to be able to define that for ourselves. Oh. And so you kind of walk in this path of where you think you're supposed to be going and what you're supposed to be doing. And it's almost robotic, but it just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit. I'll tell you, you know, in my situation, how many times I had to go pick some of my female colleagues up off the floor who were having panic attacks in the bathroom or broom closet or in their car out in the parking lot. Like, you don't think of yourself as this person, right? Especially like, it's not just a healthcare situation where you work in healthcare industry, but even when you're leading at this level, you don't think of yourself as having a panic attack because to you, you think that you're very competent, professional, you're very capable. So this isn't a panic attack. This is something else. (laughs) Right, right. And you try to force yourself into this reality that really doesn't exist. But I think it's this dialogue that we just don't have with ourselves internally. And And that was part of the way back for me and for many of the clients that I work with that struggle with that fatigue and that burnout is being able to speak to yourself in ways that are forgiving and graceful because we're so hard on ourselves. It's just unbelievable how hard we are on ourselves. And some of that pressure, yes, honestly is given to us, but some of it we put on ourselves. Oh man. Yes, we do. Oh my gosh, I think we're like our most, you know, when I look at it and I talk to people about, you know, predators and, mm. and whatnot, we're like our almost our worst predator because we'll we'll be like, no, I can do this. I can do this better. You know, I can go, I can work harder. I can stay up later tonight and get this done. I can do, you know, I can do anything. I can do this. And then then when you get to the point where you're like, I'm so tired, mm-hmm. I can't stay awake, you're like, I'm doing this. I'm doing yes. this. I'm squeezing my eyes open. I'm making it happen. And and then we'll start to be like, why can't I do this? What's wrong yes. with me? I'm yes. so stupid. You yes. know? Oh, do you find that in, in your career and working with folks one-on-one that this is like, you were just saying, you know, we're so hard on ourselves. Do you find that this with women is like very, very it's huge. Crazy. It's huge. Like, I think the thing for me that made me want to step out of what I was doing into this was that I felt the need to unburden women just like myself that were carrying, you know, these bricks on their back, whether it's their family, their ancestors, their children, their community, whatever it was, they felt like they had to be superwoman to save everybody. And they're telling themselves this, why they're having this panic attack in the car, they're sitting at their computer having a panic attack, or they're freaking out about something like, I'm an intelligent person, I should be able to figure this out. And sometimes there is no fix. The situation really does suck. Like it sucks. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to empower yourself and have some control in the situation? Or are you going to allow things to keep happening to you? But that's why I say about this thing about we don't feel like we have the permission to speak gracefully and kind to ourselves, but we also don't feel like we have the permission to push back because mm-hmm. everything is coming at us and we just, we don't know how to deal with it. So you know, in some ways, I feel like 
I don't call myself a career coach. I call myself an executive coach because I think that it implies more than just finding a career that works for you or getting to that next level in your career, but it really employs a strategy that you have to use in order to get there. And part of that strategy is realizing where you're getting in your own way. Yeah. I I think finding out where you get in your own way is almost like one of the key, key components to, to getting out of this, Mm -hmm. this downward Mm -hmm. spiral. For me, it was looking at boundaries, but also looking at self-worth too. Yes. Yes. I think a lot of us have that. It's huge. And I think, you know, I didn't understand how important self-awareness was, right? Because you maybe are very intelligent and you think that you can see a mile ahead, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's even harder to see up close. Like, am I really doing this is, I see the problem is the problem, but part of this is me. Mm -hmm. And when it's that close, it is so hard to see. And that's what I'm saying about those blind spots is the same thing that makes you great. The thing that people come to you for the thing that you're known for that sets you apart can also be that blind spot that just, you know, catches you on the side and you don't even see it. Like, where did that come from? Oh my goodness. It's true. It's true. I'm glad you mentioned that, especially being the blind spot too. Mm -hmm. I think, I think this for, for a lot of folks, um, hopefully listening to this is going, Oh, maybe I do do this. And of course, ladies, this is why we're doing this podcast because I want folks to have that self-awareness to be like, what am I doing right now? Mm -hmm. That's kind of getting in my way. Mm -hmm. So I mean, how do you start working with folks in terms of working on developing better self-awareness? How do you, how do you kind of cultivate that? You know, that's a great question. And I I probably do this in a way that's a little unorthodox, but I always start with the problem. (laughs) What's the problem? Because some people that are wired the way that I'm wired, they're very ambitious and achievement oriented, right? Mm -hmm. So you're all about the reward to a certain extent, but that doesn't necessarily motivate you to change things. And so we start with the problem because the problem is the pain and we work backwards from the pain. So if we want to unburden you from this thing, like this toxic work environment, um, this thing that you can't keep um, doing to yourself where you're, you know, maybe antagonizing yourself or overanalyzing everything or being anxious about everything. You know, we start from where the pain point is and we work ourselves backwards. And that I find has been the most um, efficient way Mm -hmm. to get to the self-awareness, but it also is the most transformational because people especially that are really high functioning folks don't understand the depth of the stories that are attached to the pain. They're looking at everything kind of at the surface level, right? And they think it's just about the job or it's just that it's not a fit or it's just this, or they won't give me this promotion or whatever. And the deeper we get into talking about the problem, the more the pain comes out and the more there is that attachment to, I wanna be better or I want to fix this, or I don't want to live this way anymore because I want to do this with my life or I want to have this experience instead. And I tell you, that is really the transformational piece. So I usually start with self-awareness, starting with the pain. Oh, I like that. I like that. And you said so many different layers because a lot of times we'll find out that it's not actually the job. It's just, you're not in alignment Mm -hmm. with the job you're in, or you're not working at a capacity in terms of your alignment. Mm -hmm. And, and your other thing you mentioned, and this was in the previous podcast is that maybe you don't have the skills right now Mm -hmm. to, and you need to cultivate those skills Mm -hmm. to be able to kind of feel comfortable in a particular career or direction you want to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, you'd be surprised. And I probably didn't see this until I started doing my own internal stuff is that, Um, you may think, hey, I'm doing pretty well professionally. Maybe you're leaning at a really high level or something. And so you don't think confidence is an issue, right? But I find that confidence is a huge issue for many of the women that I work with. And it's all interrelated and messy with things like self-doubt, self-worth, 
all that stuff about being able to ask for what you're worth, um, to be able to, you know, be able to feel like you have the goods when um, you're looking for a promotion, like confidence is interwoven all in there. And even though, you know, these women are showing up every day, there's still more that they can do to feel authentic about who they are when they show up and more they can do about feeling more bold when they do it. And so I think part of the pairing with the self-awareness that we were talking about before is helping them get to that authenticity and then helping them to find their voice. Mm, Absolutely. The voice, that's a biggie. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't know what autoimmune condition you have, but one of the most common autoimmune conditions I have in my office that I see that was related to voice and the throat is the thyroid and yeah. autoimmune thyroid conditions like Hashimoto's. Oh, yeah. You know, I think, you know, you probably see this a lot, too, is that people come in and they maybe know that they're dealing, struggling with something physically, but they may don't make the connection between the mind and the body. Mm-hmm. And you try to help close that gap for them. And once they realize how important that mind piece is, their health starts to improve. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why most of us really need a coach. Mm-hmm. Really, I know a lot, of, a lot of ladies, and this might be something that you hear sometimes is like, I really don't need a coach. I got this, you know, like I've got myself to this point in life, mm-hmm. you know, how am I going to get any further but I've found that having coaches myself, it is that mind piece yes. to help you to kind mm-hmm. of move forward. Yes. I think if it's something that you can invest in, that it's worthwhile, because how often do you get someone who is on your side to speak into your life to help you have a better experience? Mm-hmm. Like all, I, all great leaders have a team of people that surround them and make them great. So why should we be any different? Right. And so that's what I kind of think my role is. It's, it's a bit of coaching, but also some mentorship. And I think that women find value in that because they don't feel like they're alone in the process. Like, Oh, I'm the only one this has ever happened to. Like you and I were talking last time I started talking you're like, girl, that ain't nothing. Me too. (laughs) Absolutely. No, I think, I think that's huge. I think that's huge having, you know, we're we're like tribal people, right? We, we need our tribe. We need our team. We need our, our crew. And I think that this is, you know, something that so many ladies try to do things themselves. And like, Mm -hmm. they're like, I got this, I got this Mm -hmm. till the point where we end up Mm -hmm. on floors of, you know, hospitals and, and elephants on our chest and, you know, peeling ourselves off concrete, you know, parking lots. It, it's, it's like, man, if, if anyone listening to this, and I know that you're thinking the same thing is like, if we could stop you from yeah. doing that, from getting that far, this is save what this you the is. grief, save you the heartache, yeah. save you the mental battle. I know that, you know, I talk with women about this because that was a real experience and so many of them go through. It's like you're beating yourself into submission every day mm-hmm. when you're out of alignment and you're wondering, like you said, it's that internal battle. Like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I figure this out? Why aren't I happy? Like, everything looks great on the surface, but why am I just not happy? And we toil over that and we're distressed by it. And I just think that if, women allowed themselves to have that community and they were able to in all transparency be vulnerable and say that hey I need some help or I'm having trouble with this that they would find that it it would get such positive feedback that they wouldn't be shamed that they wouldn't be made to feel less than that matter of fact they would have someone probably tell them you know I've had that experience too oh yeah oh yeah that's just like we found Mm -hmm. absolutely it's your, it's mind blowing how many women I talk to and they're like, yeah, that happened to me too. And now the adrenal fatigue thing. Mm -hmm. I think this is something that we should talk a little more about because you had briefly mentioned and we kind of got on a different tangent, but I think it's important to talk a little bit about it if you're comfortable Mm -hmm. with it. Sure. It took you nine months to recover. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and this is one of the things that sometimes it takes me to like years to get ladies to recover. Mm -hmm from Mm -hmm. this. And, and it's something that it's like the reality of pushing yourself to far and beating, like you said, you're beating yourself into admission, Mm -hmm. which is like having a bear pummeling you every single day. Yes. 
<laughs> and you think when, I mean, we talk about it, like you got to be pretty nuts to do that to yourself, but you don't think about it in the moment. Mm-hmm. You just do it because I really believe to a certain extent you're wired that way. And I honestly, I had to deprogram myself while mm-hmm. I was home recovering. I had to learn how to do things like take a break. Like after a while, it the there was this thing where I was trying to get back to work. I was trying to get back. And then when I realized I could not get back, then it was like, okay, then I got to take care of myself. I just need to get better. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, that's pretty paramount. Like I wasn't trying to get better to start with. I was just trying to get back to work. And then when I realized there ain't no way this is happening, uh-uh, then it was like, Oh, well, I don't want to live this way. (laughs) I guess I better do the health thing. I better take care of myself because this isn't the way I want to live. And I really believe that we just need to change our priorities. Like, that's why I say, if anybody telling my story can help anyone, Mm -hmm. then I'll tell it from the rooftops because it's such a tragedy, even though, you know, I'm laughing about it now in hindsight, but it's not laughing like it's funny. It's the irony of my disbelief and my blindness. I was so deceived by my own blind spots. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's easy. It's so easy to do. Cause I mean, both of us in the health field, we're like, we know, you know, you know, when, you know, you know, all the signs of, of fatigue mm-hmm. and overwhelm yeah. and everything, but you're like, that's not happening to me. Mm-mm. Not me. Not going to happen to me. it. <laughs> yeah. So I think, you know, if there's women out there listening and you're not in the healthcare field and you just happen yep. to be a woman that's living this life, like we're talking about, then, you know, ask yourself, Am I rationalizing my pain? Mm -hmm. Whatever you interpret pain to mean, Mm -hmm. but are you rationalizing it? Because that's part of raising the self-awareness, your level of awareness to what you may be doing to cover over and polish it up and make it look good when really it's, it's not a good situation. And, you know, this isn't the thing, like if you think, well, there's so many people depending on me if I do this or this will happen. But the reality is if you're not at your best, then you're not going to do anyone any good. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes. I think that's an important component that you're talking about there in terms of the, everyone depends on you. You can't, mm-hmm. I can't stop. I can't take a break because everyone depends on me. We've all heard the saying of like, put your mask on before the others. Mm-hmm. But I think a lot of people will still rationalize that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. In terms of they need me. Yeah. And you know, the thing, I was probably single for a lot longer than I was married at one point in my life. And when I didn't have a family and I didn't have a husband and all that, it was the work. But it's the same dialogue. Like I'll work with women that are single, women that are not, you know, at different stages. And it's the same battle. If you are uh, one of these women that enjoys working and that they depend on me, yeah, it, then it could just as easily insert, it could be family or you insert people at work, insert, you know, whoever, people at church or whatever, where you have influence, those people that you think you need to take care of, my mother, my father, the memory of them, who I need to make proud of me, that burden, that weight that we carry as women, I think, is the thing that keeps people going back to the toxicity. And so I'm not saying totally abandon the people that are important to you or the desire to be there for them, but I, I'm saying unburden yourself from the weight, the heaviness of destroying yourself in the process. Like that, I think, is the part where the rational becomes irrational because mm-hmm. you think, I need to serve at this capacity at my own expense. And that's where we get into a trouble zone, like danger zone, danger zone. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think there's somewhat of this like martyrdom thing that happens mm-hmm. with it to a point. And yes, there's the concept of, of victimhood. And, yes. and some people do like to live in that mm-hmm. realm. But I think there's also the, the concept of, you know, at some point in my life, I'll be, I'll be thanked for everything. Well, Yeah. <sighs> that's I mean you know and this is it's not a perfect pony if that's not your thing then maybe you're a perfectionist (laughs) right yep and somehow it's still related to how people see you or how you want people to see you but maybe you don't get it 
right? So it's not a confidence thing like, oh, I'm down on myself. I'm not confident. But it's more like I'm prouder of myself and I want people to be prouder of me when I show up perfect and polished and on point every minute, every hair or strand in its right place. And that, you know, the real is the realistic piece of it is no one is perfect. Oh my God, nobody's perfect. Totally not here. Mm. I was an adult before I figured that out. <laughs> Honestly, I think I just figured it out like two years ago. <laughs> I, I know, right? No, I mean, because you see people online, right? And you see like different influences. You see, you, you mm-hmm. see folks, and a lot of people come into my office and be like, you know, you, you seem like you got it all together. I'm like, <laughs> please, no, don't look to me. We are works in progress. We're all works in progress. And so I just think that that transparency, um, you just need to have with yourself. If you're not comfortable sharing that level of vulnerability with someone else, at least be real with yourself. Mm -hmm. When you look in the mirror, don't expect to see this perfect reflection looking back, back at you, but realize that you're a work in progress and that's okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think this concept of work in progress is, is, something that I want to keep telling women over and over Mm -hmm. again, because I think that we feel like when we are, when we're higher functioning ladies, Mm -hmm. we feel like Mm -hmm. we have to have it all figured out and we have to have that strategy and that plan. And like the two kids, the, you know, Mm -hmm. car with the garage, you know, the whole like American dream, whatever that is, you know, in your head, but there seems to be that like keeping up with the Joneses strategy Mm -hmm. or like being the Joneses strategy. Yeah. No, you're right. I mean, as you were talking, I was thinking about, you know, so many years of my career, I worked with people that were not as high functioning emotionally or psychologically. And so it's very different, you know, when you work with people that are not struggling with those same issues in life, but they're still dealing with life stressors Mm -hmm. and they hold themselves to this image, like we were talking about of it's got to be perfect. Right. And the keeping up with the Joneses, or we have Mm -hmm. to look like the model family or the Kennedys or whatever. Mm -hmm. And this swing that goes on emotionally inside some of these women are huge swings of emotion that they don't ever tell anybody about, that they don't ever disclose. But I've had a lot of women tell me that they were very close to thinking about taking their lives or thinking about just, you know, maybe they weren't thinking about actively doing it, but having fantasies about wouldn't life just be easier if I wasn't here And it's that burden that I'm telling you about. Stress is a real thing. It is a real thing. And that there's no judgment. I don't believe if you go to someone who's trustworthy, I'm not saying confess to everyone, but someone who's trustworthy that can hold that space with you and allow you to really be yourself that, that that's extremely important. I think too, like um, something that I started to, internalized like you said that thing about realizing you didn't have to be perfect not realizing until I was an adult like hey I'm okay about two years ago I figured out I don't have to be perfect is that I have a young daughter and I'm thinking she's gonna go through the same thing I guarantee Mm -hmm. if I don't stop the cycle now so Mm -hmm. for me it was about my daughter like that was my anchor point for trying to clean up my own mess (laughs) But you've got to find something for yourself. If it's yourself is the anchor point or the future life that you want to have or just to be free of that level of stress and burden, like for the short term, like that, that's find a place where you can win. Because right now being in this spot where you're anxious and nervous and stressed out and having panic attacks or whatever it is or burning the candle at both ends, you're not winning. It's not winning. Not even close, Mm -mm. not even close. And so finding that spot and they Mm -hmm. find that spot, they find that point. Now what? Now what's the next step? Yeah. So you find that anchor point because remember we were talking about you work backwards from the pain and then you channel that into the future vision of your life and yourself where you want to be. And then the piece is identifying the points, the pivot points that you need to Um, execute in order to get there to whatever that vision is. For some women, it's about 
career, a title, a certain level of income, a certain way of life. For some women, it's just about that internal transformation. I want to feel more confident. I want to feel more ready. I don't want to beat myself up all the time every time I speak up in a meeting and be worried about what people think. So you have to identify for yourself where that end result is for yourself. But I would always suggest, and this is what I walk women through, is identifying those pivot points. How will I know when I'm making progress towards that goal? Because we're going to go back and revisit that goal at every, every step. And I feel like my piece as the coach is to keep coaching you in a very laser focused way to help you celebrate when you're making progress and also keep you intentional about keeping the promises that you make to yourself. Mm. Something about that accountability component. Mm-hmm. There, It's just like, that's what I think. You know, when I think of a a coach and especially an executive coach, I think a lot of people who are like, yeah, I can do this on my own. Yeah, I can do this on my own. I don't need a coach. The accountability and helping you celebrate the small wins so you don't get lost in all of the, the stuff that doesn't go right, but also being able to have someone keep you on task and make sure you're working with that is is a game changer, I think, for a lot of people. Yeah, I think it is because, you know, I used to tell people I have 21 inch dubs on my coping mechanisms because I would come up with all these excuses about why I couldn't do something or why I didn't keep a promise to myself. But I found, and many women do, that they're much more likely to follow through with a goal or a promise if they have someone else to keep them accountable. Why? Because we don't want to let other people down. That's what I was saying. The thing that makes you exceptional is also the same thing that's probably your blind spot. (sighs) That's true. (laughs) That's true. I didn't really think about that in terms of the accountability, like the back end of the accountability. It's kind of like the same using, using what takes you down or your blind spot to, for good. And then taking the rest of it and, and turning it into just good. Yes. Flip it. Oh, flip the switch. (laughs) Make it better for yourself. Make it better. Make it lighter. Right. Yes. That's, I mean, this is what we need to be thinking about. And for everybody out there, that's really in the, in a point in their career where they're just, where you're just like, oh my gosh, I, I don't know what to do. Like maybe they're saying right now, like Dr. Sanchez, I, I've listened to what you said. I think it's all great, but I just don't know how to get out of my own way. I've tried, maybe, maybe someone's had a couple mentors, right. Mm -hmm. Or a couple coaches at this Mm -hmm. point. And, and they, they're like, I haven't had any success. What do yeah. you think we could say to them to, to help them to, to really kind of take it into a focal point as to mm-hmm. might be the time to change? What kind of thoughts might you have for someone like that that's at this point? Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, the self-awareness, right? I, I, I believe you start at the pain point again. Mm-hmm. What's not working? Because you and I already talked about everything that's not working, it's not winning, right? And if you're really wanting to win at this, and you've even tried by going to hire a coach, or you tried it, read all these self-help books, you're trying it, but it's not working. So I would think, you know, think about where it is that you want to be seriously, and then employ some help to get there. The other difference is, you know, not putting your success in someone else's hands. But again, it ends and begins with you. So when you decide you're ready to move, when you decide you're ready to shift, then it will happen. It really will happen. And that other person is there just as a guide, accountability partner. And in my case, you know, I'm, I'm a guide, I'm accountability partner, but I'm also helping you with the strategy. So it becomes easier to like come out of the forest, you know, and see like this is possibly a real, like this could really happen. Mm. Right. So I'd say, you know, trust the process with someone that is an expert in that field, but also you got to make the commitment to be ready to make the shift. I only work with people that are hungry to shift. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's because maybe you've ate so much of the stuff that's not working that you're like, I can't take one more morsel of this. I am so over it. Right. Mm. I work with those people. (laughs) Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree. You got to be over your own BS so much to the yes. point where like, 
I either literally I either make change right now or I'm or I'm done. done. Yeah, because the rah rah cheerleader girl, she's going to make it anyway. I'm not worried about her. It's the one that has tried everything and is still thinking, I just, I just need to do this one thing. Or this, no. this course. I need another course. Yeah, yeah, I, I need just need this book. one thing. But yet you're miserable every day. Like when you're tired of feeling that way and you're absolutely ready for something different, think, you know, hit me up because mm -hmm. that's at the point we can do some good work for her. But the one that has tried and failed and tried and failed again, like, that's the the kind of woman that I work with, the one who's ready to have a Phoenix like transformation. Love it. Love it. If you're a hot mess and you're hot mess. The hot with mess. Two T's. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. That's exactly, exactly what I'm thinking. We, we want we want the hot messes to Dr. Sanchez who I are think ready. I may change my marketing. I know. If you are a hot mess. With mm -hmm. two T's. Yep. Call me. I'm serious. <laughs> like, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah, there you go. I'm going to, like, put that all together. And now, <laughs> now, we'll have, now we have your new marketing right there. I think we do. Oh, my goodness. So <laughs> if folks are the hot messes with two T's and you are – ready to see them where where can they find you i know we've got um www.dravsanchez.com and that's s-a-n-c-h-e-z now on on your website what where do they go to right now so that they can get right in and dive right in with you yeah okay so you'll, it'll take you to the website you'll see my picture and up there's a menu that says work with dr sanchez click on that and it'll give you an opportunity to fill out a contact form. And then from there, uh, we'll get in contact with you and see how we can help. It'll also give you opportunity to look at some of you know, my other programs, what I offer. Um, but I also do very individualized programs for people that are tailor-made because everyone is a little bit different. So um, you know, reach out and let me know how I can maybe be of service. And I'd love to hear from you guys. Ladies, I highly recommend it. She's amazing. And we will keep the conversation going to help empower women to take charge of their health and take charge of their career so that they're not becoming burnt out, not getting in a phase of adrenal fatigue. Nobody wants that. And just being able to live their lives happier, right? Like, isn't that yes. what I think, you know, you only got one shot in it. Why not be happy? Absolutely. Thank you. Amy, Thank for coming you. Back. Oh, it was my pleasure. This was so much fun. We will do it again. Don't worry. Yes. Guess what? I have a sponsor for my podcast. It's the High Country Lodge in Breckenridge, Colorado. You can find them online at ahighcountrylodge.com. Beautiful place. Can fit up to 40 people. And they have a beautiful deck, hot tub, game room in the basement, tons of trails all around. They are a quick couple minute drive over to Breckenridge Ski Resort. Couple minutes drive down to downtown. It is a great location. And the owner also offers catering. So you don't have to do anything. This is a really easy vacation to put together. Now, I have personal experience with the High Country Lodge. I love this place. The owners are my friends. And I've been there so many times, I could tell you all about it. So if you want to know, you can message me directly and I will let you all in on the secrets of the High Country Lodge. And I highly hope that you check it out at ahighcountrylodge.com. Hey, Health Junkies, I hope you enjoyed my podcast. If you want to continue the conversation based on what topic I'm talking about at any given time on the Health Fix podcast, head over to my Facebook group, Find Your Health Fix. It's where we are talking about what's going on in health, what I'm talking about in the podcast, and I love to answer questions there. So come hang out and join the conversation. And by the way, right now I have a free Manage Your Stress Naturally course that you can grab on my website at drjkrausnd.com because so many people are stressed out right now and really it has to do with the basics, your routines and simple habits that are messing you up. So head on over to drjkrausnd.com and go check out my free course on managing stress 
naturally. All right, folks, have a great day, whatever you're doing. Subscribe, rate, and share info. 